Hi, this is uh, my first lecture in module 6 uh, that is uh, uh, test for influential observations and uh, here is the content of uh, this module uh, test for influential observations. Uh, first we will be talking about uh, detection of a leverage point uh, using uh, HII where HII is the uh, ith diagonal element of the hat matrix H and uh, then we will be talking about detection of uh, influential observations uh, using you know uh, Cook's uh, D statistic and then a DF FITS that is uh, you know difference of fits and uh, this is DF BE betas that is the difference of uh, beta values. Okay. So, um, the objective of this module is uh, to present you know different uh, techniques to uh, detect uh, influential observation. So, we have learned about uh, the leverage point and the influential observation in the uh, previous module. Uh, again, I will just uh, repeat uh, those things on, we will recall those things once more. Uh, here is uh, the definition for leverage point. Uh, so, uh, I, you have uh, several observations like you know x i y i for uh, i equal to 1 to n and uh, here is the scatter plot uh, for the observations and uh, the points. So, these are the points you know in the scatter plot and uh, as you can see uh, the point A here uh, has uh, unusual x coordinate from the rest of the observations. Uh, so, this is uh, this point A is called uh, leverage point. Uh, so, it could be so uh, not necessarily that you know if you fit a model to the given data or if uh, the this point is exactly lying on the uh, fitted La, uh, fitted uh, model, but uh, but not necessarily. I mean, uh, this is also a leverage point. For example, you know. Uh, so, what I want to say is that it is uh, the point is on the is lying on the trend of the observation, but this has uh, unusual uh, x coordinate. So, this type of points are called a leverage point, and uh, Next, we will be talking about uh, uh, influential observation. Uh, so, here is uh, an example of influential observation. So, look at this point A here. Again, you know this is the scatter plot uh, for the given observation x i, y i and uh, the point A here is uh, this has you know uh, moderately unusual x coordinate and also it has uh, moderately unusual y coordinate. So, this point is has moderately unusual x coordinate and also it is not uh, uh, in the general trend of the data. So, this point is called an influential observation. Uh, so, what we learned is that uh, uh, if a point has unusual x coordinate then the point is, but it may lie on the general trend of the data then, uh, then the point is called leverage point and uh, if a point has moderately unusual x coordinate and also uh, unusual y coordinate then the point is called influential observation and the influential observation has uh, a significant effect on the model uh, regression coefficients. Okay, so, uh, what uh, we will do in this module today is that 
we will be talking about uh, several techniques uh, to detect uh, leverage point and influential po point. So, first I will be talking about uh, one technique which can um, which can detect uh, leverage point. Okay. So, test for leverage point okay so what i'll do is that first uh, i'll again recall uh, the multiple linear regression model and uh, in matrix form here is the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon and uh, you know the least square estimate of this regression coefficient beta. So, this is a vector you know that this is a vector with uh, k regression coefficients. So, beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. Okay. So, the fitted model is the fitted model is uh, y hat which is equal to x beta hat. Right. Uh, so, this is equal to x beta hat equal to x prime x inverse x prime y and this we can write as h y. You know, we, we talked about all these things in the previous module, but just I am recalling here the same thing again. So, so where h is equal to x x prime x inverse x prime and this matrix is called the hat matrix and uh, this is called hat matrix because uh, this matrix maps y to y hat. Okay. Uh, so, this hat matrix plays an important role role in identifying leverage point so uh, i told that you know uh, in fact you know the ith diagonal element of this hat matrix that is uh, h i i so h i i is the ith uh, diagonal element of this hat matrix uh, and this has an important role to check whether the ith observation is a leverage point or not uh, so let me write what is this h i i so, h matrix is equal to h is equal to x x prime x inverse x prime. Then what is h i i? h i i is the ith diagonal element of hat matrix H. Okay. Uh, so, X is uh, n cross k matrix and uh, let me just uh, write that the n rows, n rows are say for example, X 1 prime x 2 prime x n prime 
are the n rows of this x matrix then in terms of in terms of x i the ith row i can write h i i h i i equal to x i prime x prime x inverse x i. So, see you know this part is independent of i, uh, I mean whatever be the value of the i, this does not change. Uh, so, what does this mat, um, measure is that uh, this, this h i i is, uh, this one is a standardized measure of the distance of ith observation from the center of x coordinate. Well, uh, so, uh, what we have observed is that you know the ith diagonal element of the hat matrix H i i, uh, this one measures the st standardized distance of the ith point from the center of x coordinate. So, and we, 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 we call a point uh, leverage point if it has unusual x coordinate. So, then obviously, you know if h i i is large for a particular i, then that indicates the ith point is a leverage point. So, the conclusion here is that you know the, the, um, the criteria for i to be a leverage point is that uh, you know so, uh, usually the high, high h i value h i i value value indicates i th observation is a leverage point. Okay, so uh, and I said that you know uh, well, so let me just uh, uh, compute the average value of h. So I said that if if the uh, value of h i i is large, then that indicates that the ith observation is uh, a leverage point. So what I'm trying to do is is that I'm trying to find the average value of uh, h and uh, if for a particular i h i i is very larger maybe the double more than the double of the average value then uh, we say that the point i is a leverage point. Uh, so, h bar is equal to h i i i equal to 1 to n by n. So, this one is nothing but the trace of the h matrix, trace means the sum of the diagonal elements. So, trace of h by n and uh, for this matrix h, the trace of h is equal to rank h by n and the rank of h this matrix is uh, k. So, the average value of h is k by n. So, as a general rule
h i i greater than 2 times k by n indicates that ith observation is a possible leverage point. Okay, so, uh, next uh, we will be talking about uh, 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 some technique to uh, detect uh, uh, influential uh, observation. Uh, so, in case of uh, see uh, uh, in case of leverage point, uh, a point is said to be leverage point if it has unusual x coordinate and h i i measure the distance of the point ith point from the center of x coordinate. So, then obviously, if the h i i value is large then that indicates the ith point is a leverage point, but in case of inferential observation uh, recall the definition of influential observation that it has a point is said to be influential observation if it has uh, moderately unusual x coordinate as well as uh, moderately unusual y coordinate. So, here you know uh, um, we need to take care of both the x coordinate and the y coordinate and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Cook has suggested a statistic to do this. So, we will be talking next we will be talking about uh, Cook's statistic to, to detect uh, influential observation. Okay. So, detection of influential observation Okay, so, we will be talking about uh, uh, Cook statistic and it is denoted by D. So, it is a distance between uh, two things. So, uh, what uh, this uh, Cook statistic does is that uh, it measures the uh, distance uh, between uh, the fitted response value obtained using all the observations that is the usual fitted I mean I am talking about the Cook statistics for the ith observation. Uh, so, what it does is that it measures the distance between uh, fitted observation obtained using all the data or all the observations and the fitted response obtained without using the ith observation. I mean using all the observations except the ith observation. Okay. So, uh, let me write uh, down the Cook statistics formally. Uh, so, uh, Cook statistic for ith observation is, is based on on the difference between predicted response we call it you know, y hat obtained I mean this is obtained using all the observations and predicted response 
y i. So, this one is the predicted response uh, which is obtained using all the observations except the ith observation obtained. So, this one is obtained without the ith observation. Okay, so, what I want to say is that uh, what the Cook statistics does is that suppose uh, you want to compute the Cook statistic for the observation A here that means we call it D A. So, what that D A is that? So, D I is the Cook statistic for the ith observation. So, D A is the Cook statistics for the for observation A. First, you compute the distance, I mean you have to compute the Euclidean, Euclidean distance between um, between y hat and y a hat. So, y hat is the uh, fitted response based on all the observations. So, if you consider all the observations, then uh, the model will get influenced by this observation and uh, the fitted model may be look like this. Okay. Now, so this is what the y hat you know um, once you have this fitted model you can get uh, y 1 hat, y 2 hat, y 3 hat, y n hat everything and this is the vector and uh, vector of fitted observation fitted response uh, values. And now you compute uh, y a hat. So, this is the uh, fitted or predicted response value. Uh, obtained without using observation A, but using all the other observations. So, if I do not use this observation, then my uh, model will look like this, fitted model will look like this. Okay. So, from here uh, I will get uh, y 1 a hat and all these things y n a hat. So, this is a vector, this is a vector, you find the Euclidean distance between these two vectors that can be obtained using this way. Okay. So, this is y hat minus y a hat. Okay. So, this is what I want to mean by the distance of, uh, I mean the this Cook statistic uh, measure the distance between the predicted response obtained using all the observations and the predicted response based on all the observations except the ith observation. Okay. So, this is this is how we get the Cook statistic for the ith observation and similarly you do it for all the observations. So, you will get d 1, d 2, d n. Well, so this is how uh, we get the d i the Cook statistic for the ith observation d i is equal to um, y i hat it does not matter which one you are writing first y hat prime y i hat minus y hat. Okay. And, uh, you divide this by k times m s residual. Okay. So, you need to understand that uh, you know this is a vector. So, this y hat is nothing but y y 1 hat, y 2 hat and y n hat and you need to understand that y i hat is the predicted observation uh, obtained using all the data except the ith uh, observation. So, uh, this, this vector is you know I may write it in this form 
y i 1 hat y i 2 hat like that you no know, y i n hat okay so if you write you know then this can be also written as this is equal to uh, y i maybe let me use j here okay minus hat minus y j hat square it's not difficult to understand by k m s residual well so this is the uh, uh, cook statistic for the ith observation and uh, and this can be also you know uh, treated as uh, the square euclidean distance between the vector of vector of fitted values uh, and and vector of fitted I mean response values uh, when when ith observation is deleted okay well and the uh, and the rule to say that one observation is an inferential observation uh, is that uh, the value of d i so say you know see you need to calculate all this uh, d 1 so d 1 stands for the cook distance for the first observation uh, d 2 like uh, up to d n okay so the value of d i much larger than others indicate that ith observation may be highly influential Okay, so, this is not uh, difficult to understand that if uh, the d i uh, is, is, is going to be large for the influential observation. Okay. Uh, if, if i is not an influential observation, there is uh, not going to be much difference between the uh, fitted value using all the observations and the fitted uh, value. Uh, without considering the ith observation okay so next uh, we will be talking about one more uh, two more uh, statistic to uh, to detect uh, influential observation so the next one is the next one is called uh, df fi ts so this is also called you know, difference uh, between fits uh, statistic so this one investigates uh, deletion influence
of the ith observation observation on the fitted values. So, so uh, Cook statistics also does the same thing. You know, it it uh, it investigate the uh, deletion influence uh, influence of of the ith observation on the fitted values. But uh, here the statistic is different. So um, uh, for the ith observation, for the ith observation, this statistic is is defined as d f difference between fits i which is equal to y i hat minus y i hat and you make it standardized by m s residual i h i i. Okay. So, here um, you are only considering the ith observation I mean difference between. So, what is this? This is this y i hat is the uh, is the fitted value of y i obtained using all the observations and this guy this y i bracket hat is the fitted value of y i obtained without using the ith observation. Okay. So, this is uh, y i hat, where y i hat is the fitted value of y i obtained without the use of ith observation. So, here um, uh, yeah, so this is uh, using without using the ith observation means using all the observations except the ith observation and similarly, we have one uh, new uh, term you know, I need to introduce this notation that m s residual m s residual i is also is the estimated I mean is the um, predicted value of predicted value of m s residual obtained without the use of ith observation. So, him, here also you know generally m s residual uh, estimates uh, sigma square, which is uh, sigma square is variance of epsilon, which is uh, unknown. But uh, here, the M S residual bracket i is is the M S residual only uh, that is obtained using all the observations except the ith observation. That is the difference between M S residual and M S residual i. And of course, you know if ith observation is going to be an influential observation, then this quantity is uh, is, is large. Uh, let me just uh, try to explain uh, this one using this example might be. Uh, so, well okay. um, what I told is that my this difference of fits i. So, I am doing it for a for example here. So, what is this? This is I said that y a hat 
this is based on all the observations minus y a bracket hat and it has been standardized in some way. So, what is y a hat here? That means, this is using the fit using all the data. So, this is my y a hat, I mean this distance, uh, this height is y a hat. This is the point x a y a hat and what is y bracket a hat is that. So, this is the fit you know uh, using all the observations except the observation a. So, this is the point you know x a, this is the point x a y a bracket hat and this is the point x a y a hat. Okay. So, the difference is this much and this difference is going to be large if the point is influential quite clear because you take any other point and compute the uh, df fits for that point it is not going to be so large. Well, <coughs> now the testing criteria is that um, a possible a possible high influential observation is indicated by if this uh, statistic value for some observation i uh, differ, difference of fits f i t s i if this quantity is greater than 2 times k by n i am not going into the detail of you know how to get this critical value but uh, just is enough to know that if, you know if the if the df fit statistic for the ith observation is greater than this quantity for some observation, then the observation uh, can be treated as influential observation. So, next uh, we will be talking about one more statistic uh, that also um, uh, this new statistic you know that also uh, measure the uh, deletion inflation influ influence sorry the influence of uh, uh, deleting the ith observation uh, from the uh, data set okay uh, so uh, this one is called uh, difference between and the betas and uh, here it measures you know instead of measuring the difference of fits uh, I mean the difference of uh, two fitted values it measures uh, the difference uh, of uh, two um, I mean the um, estimated value of the regression coefficient beta j. So, here uh, we what we compute is that we compute how much the regression coefficient beta j hat changes if if the ith observation if the ith observation is deleted. Okay. Uh, so, instead of looking at the difference in fitted values here this uh, uh, d f betas it looks the change in regression coefficient beta j. Okay. So, this d f 
betas for the ith observation and for the jth regressor uh, ij is equal to beta j hat minus beta j hat i and it has been standardized using this ms residual i and you know what is this and x prime x inverse j j. Okay, just uh, let me tell what is this beta j, beta j is the um, least, uh, least square estimate of uh, beta j hat is the least square estimate of beta j uh, obtained using all the observations and this beta j hat i, this beta j hat i uh, is the jth regression coefficient computed computed without use of ith observation. Okay, so, what you have to do here is that you know uh, and what is this? This is the uh, you know what is x prime x inverse and j j means is the uh, jth diagonal element of x prime x inverse and uh, so this difference or uh, difference of betas I mean d f betas uh, is calculated for each i and for each j. Okay. So, here i runs from 1 to n and also j runs from uh, 0 to k minus 1 um, and as a general rule as a general rule a possible high influential observation is indicated by df difference of betas ij if this value is difference is greater than 2 by root and again I am not going into the detail of how to uh, how to get this uh, critical point. So, these are the Uh, different techniques to uh, different techniques to to detect uh, influential observation or uh, or the leverage point and uh, next uh, we will be talking about you know once uh, an influential observation is detected then uh, whether this influential observation should be uh, discarded or not okay so, what, what, what we will do after uh, detecting an influential observation in the uh, given set of data. Okay. Then the question is uh, should influential observation be discarded? Okay, so, here you know um, uh, the recommendation is that you know we need to take care uh, of the influential observation uh, 
I mean uh, first uh, we need to check whether uh, the whether there is any um, error in measurement for that particular observation and uh, if you uh, if you see that you know uh, if you see that uh, there is uh, there is an error in in recording the observation uh, then the then discarding the observation is appropriate otherwise you know if you see you know if your analysis uh, reveal that uh, there is a uh, uh, the, ob the, the observation is a, is a valid observation, then uh, there is no justification of, uh, uh, of discarding the uh, discarding a valid observation, only we need to take you know special care of uh, uh, that uh, influential observation. Yeah? So, that is all about the influential uh, observation or uh, you know how to detect and how to uh, take care of the I mean if there is an influential observation uh, what to do with that influential observation and uh, in the last module uh, because of the time constraint you know I could not uh, talk about uh, one thing that is called the press uh, statistic. So, this is not a part of this module, but I have some time uh, today. Uh, so, what I want is that I just uh, want to talk about the press statistic. Um, now and then I will stop. Okay. Uh, so, the press statistics, so uh, note that this is not a part of this module, okay. uh, the press statistic. So, this is uh, one thing I wanted to uh, talk in the previous module that is in module uh, in model adequacy checking. Okay. Uh, let me just recall you know, uh, the ith press residual. Is E i, which is equal to I already talked about this, y i hat. So you know that you know this is the observed value and this is the uh, fitted value of y i uh, obtained. without the use of ith observation okay and uh, of course here you know, large press residual are useful in identifying observations where the model does not fit the data well. Okay, so, if you can recall the uh, ninth observation in the that you know delivery time data there E 9 was very large, very large E 9 was something like 14.7 and uh, so this indicates that you know uh, uh, this fitted model does not uh, I, mean, I mean the model does not fit the ninth observation uh, well. Uh, and uh, anyway, so the press statistic uh, is is peer press which is equal to uh, E i square 1 to n. Okay. So, this is nothing but uh, 
uh, y i minus y i hat square from 1 to n and this also can be written as uh, as we learned in the previous module this can be written as e i by 1 minus h i i square. So, what uh, this uh, measure is that it measures how well a regression model will perform in predicting new data. Okay, so, this is the uh, this is how the press statistic uh, is uh, used and uh, and just uh, I want to uh, recall the previous uh, example that delivery time that data there you can check that the press value is is equal to e i square i equal to I think 1 to 25 that is 4 5 7.4 and see the press is uh, uh, um, the counterpart of SS residual when you uh, consider all the data. So, this is some just E i square i equal to 1 to 25 which is equal to 233.7 and as I told you that for the ninth observation in that example E bracket 9 was 14.7. So, E 9 square is almost the half of this uh, press value. So, uh, so, the higher press value indicates that the, um, uh, the model cannot perform very well in predicting the new data. So, especially for the data where the regressive, uh, regressive values are large. Okay. So, this indicate, so this indicate fitted model is not likely to predict a new observation with large x 1 and uh, x 2 value well, because uh, I do not have the example with me at this moment. Yeah, I have it. Uh, yeah. So, this is the ninth observation this is the ninth observation. So, you can see that you know for uh, here the x 1 value and the x 2 values are very large and that is why the E 9 value uh, and the E 9 value is very large. So, this indicates that uh, that you know uh, the fitted model is uh, not likely to predict new observations with uh, large x 1 and x 2 value oil. Okay. So, this is what uh, about the uh, press statistics and also I know as I told this is not the part of this module. Um, so, in this module we have learned about uh, we have learned about how to uh, detect uh, an influential observation and uh, once the influential observation has been detected uh, what to do with that uh, observation and I have to stop now. Thank you.